finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness. Israelites, the war that you are caught in the middle of is far more dangerous than you know. I've said to you that you live on a battlefield. So many Israelites and indigenous black people are falling asleep on the battlefield. Israelites, your spiritual journey goes beyond religion. Religion is just the organization that hides your enemies in plain sight. The only way you will defeat the enemy, you must attack its root. The root to all of your problem is hiding behind the scenes. The scripture said, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. The scripture said the reason his people are destroyed, they reject knowledge. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee that thou shalt be no priest to me. Seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. To the remnant, don't partake with them that perish for a lack of knowledge. The Most High is revealing a lot of truth to his people. Make sure that you go to the Father for the confirmation that you need. Never let other people, including myself, be the one that has the final say to what you believe. I encourage you to establish a relationship with the Father and ask the Most High all of your questions and concerns. Then wait for the Father to answer your prayers. Don't look for confirmation in places the Most High didn't send you. If some Israelites knew how their enemy worked, they would keep the doors to their mouth closed and seek the face of the Father for all of their needs. I am glad that the Most High sent Israelites and non-Israelites that are matured spiritually and not afraid of the deep things of the Most High to this channel. Only the remnant comprehend the truth the Most High is making known to the people whose heart is perfect towards Him. To the remnant, continue to have a perfect heart towards the Most High. The Most High will show Himself strong through you when your heart is perfect towards Him. Blessed are the pure in heart, but they shall see God. Israelites, throughout the spirit realm and spiritual warfare series, I've quoted the scripture in the book of Ephesians that said, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and the rulers of the darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in high places. I've opened today's message with this very scripture. But we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Other versions of the Bible translate Ephesians 6 and 12 as follows. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the directors of this world of darkness, against the spirits of wickedness in high places. The reason I wanted you to hear this version of Ephesians 6 verse 12 in the Catholic public domain version, the verse said spirits of wickedness in high places. The King James version say spiritual wickedness in high places. If Israelites know that they are dealing with unclean spirits behind the scenes that are attacking them 24 seven, they would spend less time debating and bickering. They would not let the spirit of division have its way. Most people would spend more time in the presence of the Most High instead of wasting their time indulging in the traps the Satans have set for them in the beast culture. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Israelites, it's important for you to know your enemies. 
a lot of Israelites continue to make people their enemies. They continue to blame people for what you allowed the kingdom of darkness to do to you. The Satans cannot accomplish their will in your life unless they have a covenant with you. The only one who can give them permission outside of the Father is you. If you're confused, you allow the spirit of confusion to have its way with you. If you're at peace, you gave the spirit of peace permission to enter your life. Flesh and blood is not the root cause to our nation's downfall, nor to your lack of knowledge. The idols you serve and the iniquity you indulge in are the reasons to your lack of knowledge and our nation's downfall. The scripture said it was our people's own fault that we lost the heritage the Most High gave to us. The scriptures also say in the book of Jeremiah, our people have traded their glory for the lesser. Flesh and blood didn't make our ancestors forsake the Most High. That was our ancestors' choice when they allowed the Satans to entice them. And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee. And I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not. For ye have kindled a fire in mine anger, which shall burn for ever. Hath a nation changed their gods, which are yet no gods? But my people have changed their glory for that which doth not profit. Be astonished, O ye heavens, at this, and be horribly afraid. Be ye very desolate, saith the Lord. For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and hewed them out cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no water. Fast forward to now, Israelites are still making bad decisions by letting unclean spirits and the dark powers of this world entice them through false hope with doctrines of devils. Israelites, you must look at the power that is working behind the scenes that is influencing you and the people you trust. The scripture said, focus on the things that are not seen. The seen things are temporary and the unseen is eternal. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Focusing on the unseen requires you to walk in the spirit. When you operate in the spirit, you will see everything that is hiding behind the scenes. All who look at flesh and use the carnal mind to comprehend what is spiritual will only be tossed around like puppets on a string. The Satans will use you to destroy yourself. Israelites, it's extremely important that you know who your enemies are. I did a video about seven years ago called Israelites, Know the Games Your Enemies Play. I've done countless messages about the visible and the invisible enemies. Most Israelites do not know their biggest adversary. The scripture said, Satanel is your number one adversary. Yet none of you have ever seen your number one enemy in the flesh. Yet when the Most High asked Satan, where have you come from? Satan answered, roaming through the earth and going back and forth in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. Your number one enemy is roaming the earth with his angels that fell with him, destroying lives. Yet some Israelites are unaware. They allow unclean spirits to consume them with the affairs of this world. The scriptures say Satan is like a roaring lion looking for who he can devour. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Some Israelites are walking around as if the battle is over. Israelites, you should be vigilant at all times. You live in the land of your enemies. Satanel is the fallen angel that deceived Adam and Eve in the garden. Satanel said he will wage war with you until the day of your redemption. Yet we have Israelites fighting flesh. The scripture said, put on the whole armor of the Most High so you can stand against the wiles of the devil. To the Israelites that have considered the lost books and read the lost books, you will know how Satan tormented Adam and Eve as well as their children. Our fathers in their testaments warn us to be careful of Satan and his spirits. And now, fear the Lord, my children, and beware of Satan and his spirits. Israelites, you are aware that Satan and his angels were cast down to this earth. 
The angels that were cast out with Satan are your enemies as well. I want to bring into the forefront two of those angels that is an arch enemy to the Israelites. Majority of Israelites are best friends with these enemies and uphold them in high esteem. Most people are not aware of the many roles the angels of the Most High have. In a previous message, I let you know that the Satans have great kingdoms in the beast system. Matter of fact, Satanel said to Yahshua, who is Michael, the Messiah, that all the kingdoms of this world I will give on to you if you will bow down and worship me. Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and saith unto him, all these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Satan now, the leader of the fallen angels, said he would give to Yahshua all the kingdoms of this world if he would bow down and worship him. The scriptures is letting us know that Satan have power over the kingdoms of this world. He doesn't have absolute power, but have great control over the kingdoms of this world, which would align with the most high saying to us that our warfare is with the principalities and the dark powers of this world. The way Satan now lure other angels to forsake the Most High and to follow him in his rebellion was by promising them great kingdoms. But now, O Adam, we will make known to thee what came upon us through him before his fall from heaven. He gathered together his hosts and deceived them, promising them to give them a great kingdom, a divine nature, and other promises he made them. His hosts believed that his words were true, so they yielded to him and renounced the glory of God. Satanel convinced many angels to forsake the Most High. Some of the angels that fell were high-ranking angels. Remember, there's a hierarchy system in the angelic world. Michael is the highest-ranking angel of them all. Every nation have a prince over them. Principalities are angels that is over a certain region or nation. The beast system define principality as an order of angels. Israelites, keep in mind that a principality is not one of the holy angels, but a fallen angel. That is why the scriptures warn us in the book of Ephesians that our warfare is not with flesh and blood, but with principalities and powers. Satan and his angels that were cast down to the earth after the war in heaven dwell among us. Some of these angels are ruling over the nations today. For example, in the USA, our current commander in chief is Joe Biden. Behind Joe Biden is a principality that control all the affairs of the USA. The book of Jubilee said there are many nations and many people. Although all the nations belong to the Most High, he placed a spirit over these nations to lead them astray, all the nations except his people, the Israelites. For Ishmael and his sons and his brothers and Esau, the Lord did not cause to approach him, and he chose them not because they are the children of Abraham, because he knew them, but he chose Israel to be his people. And he sanctified it and gathered it from amongst all the children of men. For there are many nations and many peoples, and all are his. And over all have he placed spirits in authority to lead them astray from him. As you heard in the book of Jubilees, the Most High allows spirits in authority to lead the nations astray from him. The scripture said, the Most High have vessels made for honor and some for dishonor. Also, Satan may be the God of this world, but he doesn't have absolute control. Earlier, I read to you Ephesians 6 verse 12 in the Catholic public domain version that said we wrestle against the spirits of wickedness in high places. Israelites, there are spirits of wickedness in high places that rule over the nations. That is why we shouldn't follow these nations and their doctrines. They have a principality that was set over them to lead them astray from the Most High. Now can you comprehend the scriptures in the book of Psalms that said they conspired against you to cut you off from being a nation? Now can you comprehend why every nation have a perpetual hatred towards you? 
They have taken crafty counsel against thy people, and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, Come, and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. But they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. According to the book of Enoch, there are 72 nations and 72 princes that rule over them. I know some of you are saying there are more than 72 nations in the world today. Many people mistake a nation for a country. For example, when you say nation, most people think of a country like China. When the scriptures say nation, it's talking about bloodline. Remember, the Most High don't identify his people by race. Race was invented by the Satans to give the seed of the fallen land inheritance. Each nation have a principality ruling over them except Israel. The book of Jubilees said that the Most High didn't set anyone over Israel to rule because he is the king of Israel and the Most High is the sole ruler of his people, the Israelites. The book of Jubilees then say the son of man or son of God was their king. The Most High said he is their king and sole ruler. The father gave his angels and his spirits charge to preserve his people. But over Israel, he did not appoint any angel or spirit for he alone is their ruler and he will preserve them and require them at the hand of his angels and his spirits and at the hands of all his powers in order that he may preserve them and bless them and that they may be his and he may be theirs from henceforth forever. Israelites, very soon you will understand why the doctrines that have been circulating that made you believe we have two masters when the scriptures clearly said we cannot serve two masters. These doctrines circulating are held in high esteem among some Israelites due to our enemies. The Most High, the Father, is our sole ruler. He is our king. He is the Holy One of Israel. Like he said in the book of Isaiah, there is no other God besides him. I am the Lord, and there is none else. There is no God beside me. I girded thee, though thou hast not known me. Did you hear that, Israelites? The Most High said, you have not acknowledged him. You don't know him. The reason most Israelites don't know the Most High, they have trade him for the God of this world. They have allowed themselves to be deceived by the doctrines that come from their arch enemy. The Most High have given some of you into the hands of your idol gods. Now that you know every nation have a prince that ruled in it except our nation, the Most High has assigned a prince to oversee his people to preserve his people as well as many other angels to help the chosen people and all the righteous. That is why the scripture said the angels of the Most High are in camp around the righteous that feared him and delivers them. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. Israelites, as a people who are spread across the world, majority of us live in the land of our enemies. The principalities that rule in those nations are looking out for the best interests of the nation they rule over. That is why in America, I can speak about the USA because that's where I live. Every day you see the government failing black people. They make it seem as if their laws are for all people to follow and everyone is judged equally. When it comes to black people in the USA, they have no power. The workers of iniquity will make it appear as if they are for you, but they are very much against you. I hope you're beginning to see why the Most High said we wrestle not against flesh and blood. When you protest, can protesting cause a fallen prince to flee? Absolutely not. As a people who is scattered with no earthly government and army to fight for us, every principality is looking out for the best interests of their nations they rule over. Who will stand up for us? Who will intercede for us? Who will fight for us? But I will show thee that which is noted in the scripture of truth. And there is none that holdeth with me in these things, but Michael your prince. By now, you should know that Michael is the prince over our people and all the righteous. How can we fight against fallen princes without an advocate or a mighty prince to fight for us? Israelites, 
one of the two arch enemies of our people that I wanted you to know about is the fallen prince called Dubio. This fallen prince ruled in the kingdom of Persia. Persia had many conflict with our people in the scriptures in the Bible. When Gabriel went to give Daniel understanding about a vision, the scripture said the prince of Persia delayed him for 21 days. Gabriel is an archangel. He is second in rank in the angel hierarchy system. Gabriel couldn't prevail against the fallen prince of Persia. How can us being mere men fight against a high level fallen prince? Israelites, do you believe you could win against the prince of Persia in the flesh? That is what majority of you do when you fight in the flesh. You're literally fighting a demonic angel with your physical strength. Every time you fight flesh, you will lose. A lot of you fighting unclean spirits and fallen angels with your physical strength. Gabriel being an archangel was like, I've been fighting this prince for 21 days and can't overcome him. Gabriel needed help. Who did the most high sent to assist Gabriel? Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, and I remained there with the kings of Persia. When the prince of Persia delayed Gabriel for 21 days, why didn't Gabriel call Yahshua, whom religion said is the commander in chief and the leader of the angels for help? Yahshua is the one that was sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Yahshua had the voice of an archangel. How come he didn't come to help Gabriel, a fellow archangel? Where was Yahshua or Jesus to some of you? Yahshua said, before Abraham, I am. So he was present when all of this was taking place. Gabriel needed the lion from the tribe of Judah to destroy the prince of Persia. Since Yahshua wasn't around and Daniel is an Israelite, Michael stood up and destroyed the prince of Persia. Just like Michael would do for the Israelites at the end of the tribulation. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. And at that time, thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. The Son of Man never seems to be around as a commander to the angels. Some of you need to accept the fact and understand that Yeshua came and did what he was supposed to do in the flesh and return to his divine nature as Michael. Because the sin of idolatry is deep-rooted in the Israelite bloodline, they allow their enemy to make a god out of him. Just like they made the golden calf idol, not once, but twice, and worshipped it. When the truth is exposing their idols, they get upset. Well, the truth hurts. It's the truth that shall make you free. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Israelites, when it comes to world leaders in the flesh, you will see presidents, generals, kings, queens, prime ministers, and all the titles given to world leaders in their countries. The people you see in the flesh are only the flesh representation of the power that rule in that region or nation. In the spirit where the eyes of the flesh cannot see, the principality that rule over that nation is controlling the president, king, queen, the prime minister, or whatever government structure that is in that nation. Remember, Israelites, the principalities over the nations do not have absolute control. The Most High have the final say in everything. For example, the scripture said the Most High moved the spirit of King Cyrus, who was the leader of Persia at that time, to build a house for the Most High in Jerusalem. Now in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled, the Lord stood up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom and put it also in writing, saying, Thus saith Cyrus, king of Persia, The Lord God of heaven hath given me all the kingdoms of the earth, and he hath charged me to build him an house at Jerusalem, which is in Judah. 
The scriptures in the book of Ezra show you how the Most High have the final say in what happens in a nation. The eyes of the flesh see King Cyrus, the leader over Persia at the time. Behind King Cyrus was the principality, a fallen angel called Dubiel. The dark powers that operates in Persia behind the scenes. The Most High was able to stir up the spirit of King Cyrus to do his will. I hope you're beginning to see why the Most High warned us in Ephesians about the principalities and dark powers of this world, as well as the spiritual wickedness in high places. It's these wicked powers that are operating behind the scenes that are coming against you. A few months ago, the indigenous black people had been made a target by the imposters who stole their identity. They said that the youth in America was their biggest threat. The dark powers behind these people have stirred them up to say publicly that they are fighting against you. In the flesh, you see the person speaking, saying these things in their meetings. Behind that person is a principality encouraging the attacks upon our people. We see this happening throughout the scriptures. Remember in the generation of Mordecai and Esther, King Ahasuerus issued a decree to attack all the Israelites. King Ahasuerus was influenced by Haman, a prince the king trusted. And Haman said unto King Ahasuerus, There is a certain people scattered abroad and dispersed among the people in all the provinces of thy kingdom. And their laws are diverse from all people. Neither keep they the king's laws. Therefore it is not for the king's profit to suffer them. If it please the king, let it be written that they may be destroyed. And I will pay ten thousand talents of silver to the hands of those that have the charge of the business to bring it into the king's treasuries. And the king took his ring from his hand and gave it unto Haman the son of Hamadatha the Agagite, the Jew's enemy. And the king said unto Haman, The silver is given to thee, the people also, to do with them as it seemeth good to thee. The powers that was operating in Haman to come against the Israelites in that generation was the principality that ruled in the kingdom of Persia. Today, we see the youth of our people have been threatened by the dark powers of this world. How will you respond, Israelites? Who will the Most High send to fight against the dark powers that have threatened the youth of his people in the USA? Where are our leaders that know the truth in leading our people and our leaders whose voice you trust? What will they do? Are they going to lead you to entreat the Father for help or are they going to tell you to wait on King Jesus? How did Mordecai and Esther respond when their people was threatened? When Mordecai perceived all that was done, Mordecai rent his clothes and put on sackcloth with ashes and went out into the midst of the city and cried with a loud and bitter cry and came even before the king's gate, for none might enter into the king's gate clothed with sackcloth. And in every province, whithersoever the king's commandment and his decree came, There was great mourning among the Jews and fasting and weeping and wailing and many lay in sackcloth and ashes. Every time the enemy come against you, spiritual warfare is required. Mordecai and the rest of the Israelites fast and prayed. Many Israelites accepted and put their trust in the prince of this world and not the prince of life they have rejected. Who will the Most High send to help? Israelites, do you see how you tie the Most High's hands? Do you see how dangerous unbelief can be? How can the Most High help the youth of the USA when his people don't serve him? They serve Jesus. Our people keep going around in circles, failing the test over and over again. The second principality I wanted to bring into the light is the fallen angel called Samuel. The book of Enoch said this angel is the principality that ruled over Rome. Samuel is an angel whose name was been interpreted as meaning angel or god of poison. He is the guardian angel of Rome, another enemy of Israel. He is considered in legend a member of the heavenly host who fell. He is equated with Satan and the chief of the evil spirits. He is the angel of death. In this 
capacity, he is a fallen angel, but remains the Lord's servant, or at least under his control. As a good angel, Samuel resides in the seventh heaven, although he is declared to be the chief angel of the fifth heaven. When I did research on the fallen angel Samuel, the third book of Baruch said this angel was the same fallen angel called Satanel. For those of you who don't know, Satanel, he is the angel that deceived the other angels to follow him. Satanel was the one that deceived Adam and Eve in the garden. Most of you know him as Lucifer, Satan, dragon, serpent, and the many names given to him after his fall. Your number one adversary. I wouldn't be surprised if the principality who ruled over Rome, Samuel, is Satan. Remember, Lucifer said he will exalt his throne above the stars of God. He will sit on the mount of the congregation on the sides of the north. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. By God beautiful as no other, and at the transgression of the first Adam, it was near to Samuel when he took the serpent as a garment. And it did not hide itself, but increased. And God was angry with it and afflicted and shortened its days. I wouldn't be surprised if they were the same angel. For those of you who don't know, Satan's seat is in Rome, on the sides of the north, where he said he would sit on the mount of the congregation. The fallen angel, Samuel, is the angel of death. The devil had the keys of death, but Michael, the key holder to the kingdom, have those keys now. Other names I find for Samuel is Belial and Satan. Satan is not a name, it is a title. For those of you who don't know, there are many Satans. Each Satan have a name. Samuel is said to be the principality over Rome. The book of Enoch said every day Satan sits with Samuel, the prince of Rome, and Dubiel, the prince of Persia, and they write down all the sins of Israel to give to the Most High so that the Father will destroy his people. Why are they called seraphim? Because they burn seraph, the writing tables of Satan. Every day Satan sits together with Samuel, the prince of Rome, and Dubiel, the prince of Persia, and they write down the sins of Israel on their writing tables, which they hand over to the seraphim so that the seraphim can present them to the Holy One, blessed be he, so that he could eliminate, destroy Israel from the world. But the seraphim know the secrets of the Holy One, blessed be he. They know that he does not want the people of Israel to perish. The scriptures in the Bible confirm the Satan's accusing us before the Most High. The scripture says Satan is the accuser of the brethren. The book of Zechariah revealed the vision Zechariah had about the trial of the high priest. Zechariah saw Joshua standing before the angel of the Lord. By now, all of you should know who the angel of the Lord is. Satan came to stand at his right hand to resist him. The angel said to Satan, the Lord rebuke you. And he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. And the Lord said unto Satan, The Lord rebuke thee, O Satan. Even the Lord that hath chosen Jerusalem rebuke thee. Is not this a brand plucked out of the fire? The angel of the Lord command that they remove the filthy garment Joshua was wearing and to remove his iniquity. The angel of the Lord had his garment replaced. The angel of the Lord explained to Joshua what the Most High said. If Joshua would walk in his ways, he would be a judge in his house. And the angel of the Lord protested unto Joshua, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, If thou wilt walk in my ways, and if thou wilt keep my charge, and thou shalt also judge my house, and shalt also keep my courts. And I will give thee places to walk among these that stand by. Hear now, O Joshua, the high priest, thou and thy fellows that sit before thee. For they are men wondered at, for behold, I will bring forth my servant, the branch. 
for behold, the stone that I have laid before Joshua upon one stone shall be seven eyes. Behold, I will engrave the graving thereof, saith the Lord of hosts, and I will remove the iniquity of that land in one day. Where was Joshua in all of this? Isn't he supposed to be the king to Israel, the one that will intercede, help the Israelites before the Most High? We see the angel of the Lord doing the will of the Most High. The book of Enoch revealed the identity of the four presents standing in the presence of the Most High. The presents are praying, interceding, as well as fending off the Satans that come to accuse us before the Most High. And on the four sides of the Lord of Spirits, I saw four presents, different from those that sleep not, and I learnt their names. For the angel that went with me made known to me their names and showed me all the hidden things. And the third voice I heard pray and intercede for those who dwell on the earth and supplicate in the name of the Lord of Spirits. And I heard the fourth voice fending off the Satans and forbidding them to come before the Lord of Spirits to accuse them who dwell on the earth. Who are these four presents which I have seen and whose words I have heard and written down? And he said to me, This first is Michael, the merciful and long-suffering, and the second, who is set over all the diseases and all the wounds of the children of men, is Raphael, and the third, who is set over all the powers, is Gabriel. And the fourth, who set over the repentance unto hope of those who inherit eternal life, is Phanuel. And these are the four angels of the Lord of Spirits and the four voices I heard in those days. Israelites, look at how the angels that stand in the presence of the Most High are praying on our behalf and interceding. They are fending off the Satans that come to accuse us before the Most High. Where is Jesus? How come he's not there praying and interceding on our behalf? Michael, the one many believe is just an angel who protect us, is praying, interceding, presenting our prayers to the Most High, and communicating with the Israelites on the behalf of the Most High, while Jesus and Yahshua are mute. The Satans come to accuse us daily before the Most High, but the holy angels are interceding on our behalf to block them from getting their writings of our sins to the Most High the Father. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. The book of Jubilee said the Most High put his angels over us to preserve his people because he doesn't want to destroy his people. There are principalities sitting with Satan to conspire against us to accuse us before the Most High day and night. Regardless if the principality ruling in Rome behind the scenes is Satan or the angel of death, Rome is the mother harlot. Out of Rome came the world's number one religion, the Roman Catholic Church. The Roman Catholic Church have daughters all over the world. And her daughters, the Israelites, in and out of the awakening, take refuge. Israelites have been fellowshipping with her for multiple generations. They love her doctrines. Many Israelites live their life based on the doctrines that come from the mother harlot, the head leaders of the synagogue of Satan. Whatever Rome say, overrule what's written in the scriptures. Every day around the world, the Israelites are breaking bread with her. They sit at her tables and make sacrifices to her idols. But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. Ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. Ye cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. Many Israelites put their trust in Rome instead of their God. In Rome, they trust. Rome created all of these wicked doctrines to keep you in sin. While you're being deceived by their doctrines, the principality that rule in Rome go to accuse you before the Most High in the hopes that the Most High would destroy you. 
Presently in the so-called awakening, we have Israelites defending her doctrines. We have Israelites fighting to serve Rome's gods. The savior of the world who Rome presents to you as God in the flesh is a snare to you. That is why you can't find that savior anywhere in the scriptures, but mainly in the New Testament that is highly influenced by Rome. The scriptures that was removed proclaimed the most high as the savior to his people and the king of Israel. However, in the New Testament from Rome, Jesus is the king of the Jews, the God in the flesh that would save the world. And Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross. And the writing was, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, that ye may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. I, even I am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. Faint not to be strong in the Lord, that he may confirm you, cleave unto him. For the Lord Almighty is God alone, and besides him there is no other Savior. The Council of Nicaea, a Roman council, determine what scriptures are permitted in the Bible. The Roman leaders remove and take away scriptures as their heart desire. They made an authorized version of the Bible available to you. It's the Bible they have authorized, not the Most High. Although other books that support the scriptures in the Bible said they opened the books and inserted themselves in it, some Israelites believe Rome's every word. Despite the scriptures not supporting none of the doctrines, some Israelites follow them anyway. The kingdom of darkness threatened the black youth for the world to see. The one they put their trust in is sitting on the right hand of himself, watching as the Satans attack his people. In the meantime, the Most High is pleading with his people to return to him, waiting for them to engage in spiritual warfare to get the help that they need to fend off the Satans that come to destroy them. How long, Israelites, will you believe in Rome's fairy tales? The same fairy tales they gave you to be a snare to you. Don't you know their idols are meant to be a snare to you? Wherefore I also said, I will not drive them out from before you, but they shall be as thorns in your sides, and their gods shall be a snare unto you. And it came to pass when the angel of the Lord spake these words unto all the children of Israel, that the people lifted up their voice and wept. How long will you cry out to gods that cannot save you? Israelites, the dark powers of this world, the rulers of the darkness of this world, the principalities and powers of this world are your enemies. No matter how they try to make it appear as if the battle is with flesh, your greatest enemies are the rulers of this world, the principalities attacking you from every direction. I hope now you can use discernment unto why the Most High appointed his greatest prince over you. Now is not the time to fight your own and allow yourself to be deceived by unclean spirits sent to cause division and strife because the secrets are being exposed. It is written everything secret will be made manifest and everything hidden will come to light. For nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest, neither anything hid that shall not be known and come abroad. Israelites, don't let the Satans toss you around like a rag doll. We wrestle not with flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, the rulers of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places. Satanel is the reason so many of you believe Jesus is God in the flesh and the various doctrines of devils from the mother harlot you love. Israelites, it's either you are for the Most High or against him. You can't be both. It amazes me to see how history is repeating itself in our community in every generation. Our people keep failing the test. When Joshua, the son of Nun, was leading the Israelites to their land inheritance, he had to tell the Israelites, choose this day who you're going to serve. Despite the wonderful works 
the Most High has done for his people, the sin of idolatry continue to plague them. Israelites, you cannot sit at the tables of devils and the table of the Most High. When you accept Rome, you are sitting at the tables of devils. Don't let your love for the Most High be lukewarm. The Most High will spit you out. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. The Most High didn't call us out of darkness into his marvelous light to continue to serve idols. The principalities of this world are conspiring against you. They are the ones encouraging you to sin against the Most High. The time has come for you to know the identity of the powers that are behind the scenes working against you. The Israelites' greatest enemies, the Prince of Persia and the Prince of Rome, these principalities don't have your best interests at heart. Every day you have to make decisions, Israelites. The good news, you don't have to make the decisions alone. You can always go to the Most High. As the Most High revealed the secrets with truth, don't let the Satans deceive you by stealing the good seed the Most High is planting in you. I know the remnant know better, but I have to say to you, like Joshua said to our ancestors, it's either you're for the Most High or against him. Choose this day who you will serve. As for me and my house, I will serve the Most High. Him only do I serve. If you serve the Most High, the Father, the Great Prince, stand by you. Now therefore fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth. And put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt. And serve ye the Lord. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, Choose you this day whom ye will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And the people answered and said, God forbid that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For the Lord our God, it is that brought us up and our fathers out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage and which did those great signs in our sight and preserved us in all the way wherein we went and among all the people through whom we passed and the Lord drave out from before us all the people even the Amorites which dwelt in the land therefore will we also serve the Lord for he is our God <laughs> 